Welcome back to Unpacking the Trunk Costumes. Today's video is not going to necessarily be about sewing anything, but just a couple other things. This first clip is of a husif, which Abby Cox made for me because her and Noelle from Costuming Drama hit 10,000 subscribers on Instagram. Congratulations! And as a giveaway that I entered, they, um, uh, Abby made me this beautiful little husif. So here I am looking for all the bits and pieces I want to put in there. It's so cute. So I found some pins to stick in the, in the little pillow part. Um, I love the colors that she used. It's so useful and we actually have a, a trailer and I'm gonna be probably keeping this in my trailer just for those just in case things. So there's some buttons I put on a little safety pin. I have a lot of stash, <laughs> meaning stuff that um, I find in antique stores and thrift shops and I am putting some of those little nifty things into my husif. There's a little packet of old needles. Those will come in handy. You know, I. I probably should have put a magnifying glass in there too of some kind. <laughs> Those look like really tiny eyes. And there's some thread. See that little seam ripper way, way back there? That that actually ended up in there too. There's my little my little plastic thimble. I love this. I love this so much. It's so special. So there it is. And this is the card that Abby sent me. Um and I love this quote, when you don't dress like everyone else, you don't have to think like everyone else. And it's from bad girls throughout history. I love that. So here's some things that I find at antique stores and thrift shops. This is a neat little sort of ruler with a, almost like a lip on the end of it, like a T-square. This is a little looper threader, looper and needle threader. It's kind of nice. Another loop. Thing. It's a loop turner. I had one of these years ago. I wish I still had it and now I, I have another one. And here we have uh, oh, a drawn iron pencil. I don't know when I'll ever use that, but gosh, you never know. And here is some Mark Begone tracing paper. You know what cracks me up is to look at these packages and see the prices on them. There's a nice Always need one of those, tape measure and some pins. A little packet of needles for 30 cents. Yeah, beading needles. And here you go, 19 cents for a packet of six different kinds of yarn needles. This is funny, these little three pieces here were in somebody's um, pill bottle. <laughs> so there you go. And that was too, yeah, that was handy. Um, Taylor's chalk can always use that with a little sharpener critter on the top. Uh, grommet setter. Thank you. I really needed one of those. These things, I don't know what they are. If you can tell me what they are, um, put something in the comments. It looks like a little mouth, but it has a kind of a cutting edge on one side of it. This, I have no idea. I, I, I it, something to do with knit, knitting, crochet, I, I have no idea. No idea what that is. And Velcro, always useful. So it always makes me kind of sad when I see old sewing machine drawers, but it also makes me really happy. Uh, it makes me sad because they've been taken off an old sewing machine that probably should have been left intact, but it makes me happy because I love the storage. And this one came with everything that was in it. So there's a bunch of old thread and um, buttons and trim and all kinds of of little things I should I'll go through all this and try to figure out exactly what it is I've got and then uh, it's so pretty I think it's just so pretty I have another set it'll go right beside it and um, here's the bottom it's got sunflower seeds in it I love sunflowers love them so maybe I'll plant those I don't know well, more buttons and pins. Yay, pins and more buttons. It looks like maybe somebody's little brooch or something came apart and they 
put it in the drawer and said, oh yeah, I'll get around to fixing that and never did. So that looks like part of it. And that looks like part of it. And uh, there was another piece of it in there. There it is. This was a whole packet of stuff that I picked up that was in like a Ziploc bag. All of this bias tape. You know, you ever wonder about that lady on bias tape? Who was she? I wonder who she was. That lady with the short hair and the white shirt. Anyway, it had lots of buttons in it. A little packet of, that was, I think that one was separate, a separate packet of buttons, but there's a whole random set of buttons right there. Yay buttons, yay thimble. This was in it too. This was a 1947 Singer Dressmaker's Guide. I love the pictures in it. And I think it's always so nice to have dressmaking guides from times past because it tells you how they made clothes then. It's the biggest lineup in town. This was in another little packet of things that I found. It looks like a little child's hand crocheted vest of some kind. Isn't it sweet? Look at that. How sweet is that? I don't have any little children, but you know. This was a, a hunk of blue fabric. Um, I want to say it's probably a blend. There's about four yards of fabric there. Woo woo! This was just fat quarters that I found uh, in another bag full of stuff. I do quilting, so you can always use fat quarters. Yay! It's so pretty. I can see Christmas things coming out of that. And these are hat stands. I've never had any hat stands. And so I was so happy to find these little things. Yes, my hat fits perfectly. And these ones will fit right on your shelf in your closet, which is awesome. And now they're in my sewing room, stuck in little my little cubicles. Lace. I always find lace at antique shops, and I always try to pick it up. And these ones were so pretty, and there were so many of them. A lot of these would work, I think they'd work really well for insertion, um, insertion lace, but there's some with some blue, and that was a big chunk of lace. I ended up measuring all this out during one of the cause tuber live chats. <laughs> it was a great thing to be doing. This was a piece that was joined on one end, so it probably went on somebody's little skirt or something, but how pretty is that? little teeny tiny look how much of that there is little teeny tiny lace it's really really sweet and there's some brown and almost I want to say it's the same pattern of white that's right beside it and there's really cute little lace there how pretty would that be along a collar and here's some more kind of flat lace how pretty there wasn't a whole lot of, of any of these, but what? That's okay. I like to have them anyway. Little tiny piece of lace here. How sweet. These, I thought they were all needle holders. Well, they are also toothpick holders. Yay. <laughs> they can be needle holders too. So I found three of them in a little bundle for like a dollar and a half. So I picked them up was this boil brand buy new shuttle if machine skips stitches or broken thread boy needle company chicago there you go these these were halves of old pillowcases literally they were old pillowcases and i think they're so cute uh, i went ahead and and picked them up i think they were a dollar for both of them what i mean they're never gonna be pillows again but that is vintage fabric, and they are awfully sweet. Okay, this is one I'm really proud of. This is wool. I did do a burn test on it. It is wool, wool, wool. Oh, yes, I must do the crumple test. It sure was wool, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's got a lot of pink in it, about five yards there, actually. And this was another piece of cotton. I believe it's a cotton blend, and it's got about, I think there was about four yards in there. So happy to have that. I think I got that for three bucks. This is a tacket. And since I found this, I had never seen one of these before. And since I found it, I've actually seen more of them. And what it is intended to do is to make the mark on your fabric. And it came complete with the instructions and the transfer paper and the whole thing. Um, I did try it out. 
Um, it it's okay. <laughs> it 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 makes a mark. Um, you got to push pretty hard, and I would recommend extra fabric um, under it to make sure you get a good good mark on it. But you know, there it is. Okay, so this. This bag of stuff came from a really random antique and antique clothing, not antique clothing, but vintage clothing store in Portland. And this bag is about as random as Portland can get. That's Barnaby. He's checking out the jello mold. Hi, Barnaby. There's Gracie back there. He think, I guess he thinks there's jello in it. So this bag just came with everything that you see that I'm holding out. Um, yeah, there was chain. There was a belt buckle. Here's um, a t-shirt with T-Rex on it. Who knows what they were going to do with this, maybe make a quilt. It's not about how you look, it's about how you see, which I think is sweet. That was another t-shirt, chunk of t-shirt. This is a, um, I couldn't figure out what it was and I put it on Instagram and it turns out it's a third hand. So that little flower part hooks into a clamp and then that part there that's opening up is the part that you would hold on to. So maybe for braiding something or, or something like that. So handy yeah there was a plastic horse in the bag some sequins a weird little thing on some elastic <laughs> now this is my best find I found this for $40 at an antique store my father worked for Montgomery Wards for over 20 years so I'm kind of have a soft spot in my heart for Montgomery Wards and this was a machine that was probably 1950s I want to say about 1954 in beautiful condition uh, there is a condition problem with the with the cord that goes to the foot, so I will get that fixed at Montevilla Sewing Center here in Gresham. Thank you so much for joining me today on my little vintage and antique stuff haul, I suppose we could call it. I hope I've inspired you to do a little antiquing and vintage shopping of your own. If you did enjoy it, please go ahead and hit a thumbs up button for me. If you'd like to be notified of future videos, hit the subscribe and the bell icon to be notified. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.